Ready. Welcome everyone. It's time for us to start our um, event within the event. I'm so excited about this. Welcome to Saving uh, Our Planet Libraries in the UN. Welcome to um, this uh, event where we're going to talk about the Sustainable Development Goals, Saving Our Planet Libraries and the UN Sustainable Development Goals. I would like to send my appreciation to uh, Rebecca Smith Aldridge and to the leadership of San Jose State University High School and the uh, Vice Provost, the Dean, everybody for coordinating this conference about such a timely issue um, and really life-saving topic for ourselves and for our planet. During these 30 minutes, I will share with you in a broad way why the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or also known SDGs, um, are important and why libraries should care about them. The role of libraries in helping communities achieve the SDGs, examples of how they are doing that, and I will share efforts of the ALA United Nations 2030 Sustainable Development Goals Task Force. I will take questions at the end, and I hope we have some time for that. Please write them on the chat box in the meantime. The United Nations uh, 2030 Agenda, which includes the 17 Sustainable Development Goals that we have on the screen, to which I will refer as the SDGs. Um, these guide the development efforts of countries around the world and were adopted in September 2015 during the United Nations General Assembly in New York, which I attended as part of a group of librarians that for several years advocated on behalf of IFLA for access to information, culture, education, and ICTs, information and communication technologies to be included in the SDGs. IFLA stands for the International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions and is based in The Hague. But library associations from all over the world are members. Thanks to an amazing global library field, a great global team led by IFLA and to an advocacy strategy from IFLA that included concerted efforts coordinated with colleagues in countries' capitals, in communication with us at the United Nations. Also, the strategy included publishing on global and national media, meeting with UN members, permanent representatives from different countries, ambassadors and their staff members, partnering with civil society, sending emails, phone calls, uh, texts, and tweets. And so this was the strategy we utilized to um, get access to information on the sustainable development goals. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. So we successfully secured the inclusion of access to information on goal 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions, specifically on target 16.10. And we have that on the screen. It says ensure public access to information and protect fundamental freedoms in accordance with national legislation and international agreements. If we think that the UN Millennium Goals, remember those? Well, they did not include access to information that for 15 years, it was not included in the global agenda. We can see how this was and still is a huge success for IFLA and for library and information professionals around the world. We empowered ourselves with this change. 
And for the first time since access to information was included in a document that is used by countries to guide their development efforts. And to which they will dedicate funds and infrastructure. So this was historical, thanks to many of you. The background of this great achievement is very clear. Everything was promoted and worked by IFLA and by librarians like me advocating on behalf of IFLA. Personally, I feel very fortunate to have been able to contribute to this achievement by attending forums and meetings to support IFLA and libraries at the United Nations in New York. On the screen, we have pictures of us. Here, there is one with Donna Sheeter when she was president of IFLA, president-elect. And we have another one with one of our civil society partners and Gerald Leitner, current secretary general of IFLA. We advocated on the floor of the United Nations, but also in programs presented in conjunction with other professionals related to access to information, such as journalists, along with whom we presented the first program of libraries at the UN. And the picture on the screen is from the first uh, program IFLA presented at the United Nations, which I presented, and it was all about data revolution. Why we should care that our libraries offer services and help communities achieve the SDGs. Now that we have the background, right? Now that we have how this happened. Well, because access to information, which is at the core of what libraries do, is a cross-cutting issue that impacts every area in our societies and communities. And for example, and specifically related to areas which visibility has raised, uh, have been uh, raised during this pandemic that has so deeply impacted our communities and the lives of people around the globe. So we have goal three, the health and well-being of people. And we have goal eight, helping people have decent jobs in economic growth in countries. And all the goals are wrapped in by goal 17, which is partnerships. These will help us to place libraries in a position to significantly transform societies and communities around the globe during the pandemic, while the world recovers from it and after. Access to information is a cross-cutting issue that impacts everything in the lives of humans, our planets, and those that inhabit it. It impacts our path to eradicate poverty. That's goal one. So that the level of hunger is zero, goal two. The health and well-being of people, goal three. Quality of education, goal four. Gender equality, Goal five, clean water and sanitation in the communities. Goal six, affordable and non-polluting energy in our countries and planet. Goal seven, helping people have decent jobs and economic growth in the countries. Goal eight, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. Goal nine, reducing inequality in and between countries, goal 10. Sustainable cities and communities, goal 11. Responsible production and consumption, goal 12. Adopting urgent measures to combat climate change and its effects, goal 13. Conservation and sustainable use of oceans, seas, and marine resources, goal 14. Life of terrestrial ecosystems, goal 15, and the promotion of just, peaceful, and inclusive societies, goal 16. And goal 17 represents partnerships that will help us implement all the goals. 
In short, the role of librarians on implementation of sustainable development. All types of libraries have the power to provide access to information that can help people better educate themselves to achieve goals, secure jobs, increase incomes, prevent health conditions, and learn about water systems and agriculture to save our planet. Now I'm going to show you how libraries have for many years done work related to sustainable development goals. And my examples today are about um, how they are helping to save our planet. I would like to invite you, while I present some examples, to start thinking about your libraries and the communities you serve at academic, public, school, special libraries, all types of libraries, and the library initiatives that each one of you have already. Each one of you have initiatives in your workplace. And this is how you can align with your library priorities and the SDGs. It is very important for us to understand that all libraries are contributing to the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. What happens is that we must connect the dots and see what are we doing and what the corresponding SDG is. I also recommend that you present the SDGs to your library users, share them with them, and share them with your elected officials in your country or your region, city, or municipality. You can use the stories of how your library is meeting the SDGs to advocate for your library and show how it is helping your city, your country, your university. Libraries are essential for development and must be included in the decision-making of each place. So your stories on how you are helping your communities in academic, public school, libraries um, move closer towards development are important. And it's very good to use them for advocacy when you have to advocate to your school principal, to your provost at universities, or maybe the board um, of universities, or your library trustees, and of course the mayors, the governors, um, and, and so on. And um, my first example comes from the New York Library Association, and is known as NILA. And they have established a sustainability initiative. Um, sustainable, resilient, and regenerative are the key words they, in which they describe this effort. It is a strategy for the future of New York libraries. They also include principles of the paper button line, as many people have mentioned during uh, this conference already and um, that means socially equitable, environmentally sound, and economically feasible. So the NILA Sustainability Initiative provides New York library leaders with time and resources to articulate how libraries adapt to our changing world why, while as co-creators shape strategies that ensures libraries remain vital recover from disruption, and provide continued value to the communities they serve. They have published an app, this was a few years ago, uh, and the initiative corresponds at least with goal six for clean water and sanitation, goal seven for affordable and non-polluting energy, goal 11 for sustainable cities and communities, and goal 13 for climate action. They have also developed a sustainability map to help libraries become more sustainable and it's available in the app. Libraries play an important and unique role in promoting community awareness of resilience, climate change, and a sustainable future. 
They are also leading by example, by taking steps to reduce their environmental footprint. You can find more information about that in this uh, uh, effort from the New York Library Association. I also have great news for you. The American Library Association, ALA, is supporting the library community by showing its commitment to assist in the development of sustainable libraries with the addition of sustainability as a core value of library science, our profession. It is a historical and very progressive action. My next example, as life on earth is vital to our survival, as terrestrial ecosystem life, which is goal 15, tell us, the work done by Alaskan librarians and library uses to help identify bats in danger of spread using devices provided by the government was extremely important to save our planet. They worked in partnership with the government to there be save the area's biodiversity for which bats are a key part. And here we have some of these heroes saving our planet. I met them when I went to Alaska to the Alaskan Library Association Conference. Next, we have dolphins. And this is an example from Leah Blokarsik. And she is a winner of the I Love My Librarian Award, of which I was a juror and a chair of that year. And she is from the Florida Atlantic University. She collaborated with marine biologists on an experiment studying dolphin migration patterns. The project is an example of how libraries contribute to scientific research and help save the planet. This is beautiful. I'm telling you, uh, access to information is a cross-cutting issue that impacts all areas of our lives and our planets. And these, um, this corresponds to goal 14, life below water. The next example, uh, libraries are taking time to know their communities to really provide what they need. The Cambridge Public Library in Massachusetts has started a community garden. They not only help with community organizations to plant, but they also give talks about food, nutrients, and food. And some of you might be uh, familiar with this type of effort. I know I visit libraries in uh, Los Angeles Public Library that they also maintain a community garden. So these are great initiatives that go with goal two, zero hunger, trying to eradicate hunger, and goal three, good health and well-being. And they go at least with those two goals. Uh, the library in Berkeley, Berkeley Public Library, is providing plugs for charging electronic cars. This helps with less consumption of gas. And this goes with goal 11 of sustainability and goal 12, responsible consumption. We are all doing what we can, right, to save our planet. When libraries in Puerto Rico were decimated by Hurricane Maria, I gather librarians for a library tour of the island and to determine damages and bring donations. We raised awareness and funds for ALA grants to help rebuild libraries. And that was a beautiful um, tour that we were able to do in the midst of the reconstruction. Um, and this goes with goal four, quality education, Goal 10, reduced inequalities, and goal 7, partnerships. As we can see, uh, libraries and librarians are already helping communities to meet the sustainable development goals. Librarians rock, and I hope that you are already thinking about all the things your library is doing to help save our planet um, in terms of the people that live in it, and also nature and life, a terrestrial life, in life below water. 
as the United Nations classifies them in the goals. Now, IFLA asked library associations around the world to join in a global effort to highlight how libraries contribute to the SDGs. And ALA responded. Our current president, Julius C. Jefferson, had the idea to create a task force on the United Nations 2030 SDGs to develop a multi-year strategic plan to increase participation. And this participation is by libraries in efforts to achieve the goals. Because we are, yes, living in a developed countries, but there are many pockets of our country and our population that still need to move closer to development. So I'm happy to share the task force and I'd like to invite you to visit the site ALA created. You can look for ALA UN 2030 Sustainable Development Goals Task Force. And I have a screenshot um, here for you. And this uh, website is to share resources developed by the task force. Our efforts uh, to date include a webinar that we presented last June, featuring initiatives from Australia, Germany, and French library associations. And they're sharing stories of libraries in their countries, um, helping communities meet the SDGs, and the websites that they created to show the stories. Their recording is available on the task force website, and you are more than welcome to uh, access it. We also created various charts and today I want to show the chart about how libraries are helping communities move closer to development during the pandemic. And this speaks to the challenges brought by the pandemic and the incredible opportunities libraries have to impact our society, communities, and the world. For instance, goal 16, clean water and sanitation. Libraries are partnering with the city health departments and NGOs to disseminate information about prevention measures to stay safe from the virus. Goal 10, reduce inequalities. Libraries are partnering with language schools and embassies to help people learn languages and acquire new skills. Goal 11, sustainable cities and communities. Libraries are partnering with NGO, non-governmental organizations, the Red Cross, and cities to promote safe, sustainable practices to encourage those in densely populated urban areas to do their best to follow recommended measures, such as social distance and self-isolation. And so those are some of the examples. You can find all these charts on the website of the task force on the ALA um, place, uh, space. Now, I asked John Shabo, director of the Los Angeles Public Library and a member of the ALA uh, task force that I'm sharing, to create uh, a chart with his staff matching the, a, uh, the Los Angeles Public Library's programs and services with the goals. And um, this is the amazing chart they created. And I'm sure many libraries can match their services to one of the 17 goals and, um, or all the goals. Let's see, from that chart, I would like to highlight their work on goal one. LAPL's career online, High school enables adults to earn a free, accredited high school diploma, which can lead to higher paying jobs and a brighter future. And this is related to no poverty. Let's see goal five. And I have to move my screen a little bit because I have um, something here from this side. So goal five, gender equality to actively encourage empowerment of girls, LAPL offers workshops on biodiversity, coding, and more. Beautiful. 
Another uh, goal I would like to highlight from the Los Angeles Public Library chart is climate action, goal 13. Uh, their neighborhood science program empowers citizen scientists to gather and share data for projects that monitor air and water quality, heat islands, and cloud formations. And I also would like to highlight goal 15. Libraries uh, provide data and research resources to promote sustainable ecosystems. They partner with science organizations to track mosquitoes, habitats, and biodiversity trends. And this is related to life on land, goal 15. Next, I want to ask academic and school libraries to produce charts like this one to show how they are helping communities to move closer to development, to achieve development. Next steps for our task force include strategizing to gather library stories on our website to show how libraries are already helping communities meet the SDGs. And we will build on our early work, the webinar in all these charts, to develop the multi-year plan to increase participation by libraries in efforts to achieve development. This is uh, the main charge that we have. So we are very enthusiastically coordinating our program for the ALA Annual Conference. So I want to put a plug here. We hope to have a politician present to speak about his work with the local library in relation to the SDGs. And I already envision it is gonna be beautiful and inspiring. And hopefully we can announce that in the next coming months, in the next year. But in my role as chair, I'm full of energy and also connect with librarians from the world. And this past September, we had a US Russia library dialogue and I host one of the sessions on the sustainable development goals and the role of libraries, how we are helping communities. Um, we also share our efforts on a webinar from the German Library Association, and uh, we're publishing an article in a Chinese library journal, and I'm here today. I'm very happy to share, um, even if brief, the work we are doing and um, the importance and the role of libraries in development and also helping communities achieve the sustainable development goals. Um, I love that librarianship is diverse and bring us together to help us to transform our world. So it's very important for us to help libraries and librarians uh, understand that all libraries are contributing to the sustainable development goals to uh, help communities achieve development. What happens is that we do this all the time. It's part of our services. Uh, so we need to, again, connect the dots um, and see what are we doing and what are the corresponding goals. We can share with the local government and advocate for libraries. They can definitely help us to advocate for libraries, you know, when we need funding, more hours, and we need, uh, well, to maintain libraries equipped with librarians and many more. So this is the time for libraries to establish themselves as authority and key players that are helping communities meet the sustainable development goals and work with uh, global and national bodies looking into how we can contribute to move our cities and countries closer to development including examples shown today and also other areas that pandemic, the pandemic has shown uh, us are vital for the functioning of our societies, such as universal broadband, access to the internet, copyright, legal matters related, for instance, to fair use and licensing of materials. These are important as well to help people, students, researchers to access the information and to help us to save our planet too. Um, a main opportunity related to the SDGs rooted 
into our current reality of the pandemic is that this is the time for library associations, libraries and librarians like you to help us build a strong partnership or strengthen existing ones with local and global organizations and private and public agencies to help our societies deeply impact by COVID-19, its aftershocks and beyond. And I am absolutely convinced that all of us working in concerted action with cohesive leadership can do this. We can do this. And with this, I'm going to conclude my talk and I'm going to check if we have some time for questions, but I think we have to close right now. So yes, uh, I'll be happy if you can um, email me. Just one quick thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I guess email uh, because people are interested in templates for the charts to fill out for their own libraries. Oh, that is wonderful. I'm so happy they are motivated because this is one of the activities we have coming up uh, from the task force. So I'm so happy there is interest. And my email, I need to then stop sharing so I can uh, write in the chat. Let me see if I can do that here. Let's see. Oh, I can do that. Yes. Email, I'm going to. That's my email. Uh, I send it to private. <laughs> okay. Zoom is fun. I just went ahead and sent it to everyone. Fantastic. And, and so I'm um, very happy to. Um, okay, I'm just scrolling through the. Um, hmm. Very active chat, wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I see people have joined us from different parts of the world. I'm so happy. Um, well, this is it for today and we'll see each other online. We can uh, connect on Twitter and um, take care everyone. Thank you for helping to save our planet. <laughs>